road to Maple Hill. Welcome back everyone to the 2023 Sunstein Open. We are on the back nine. I'm joined again, once again, with Kyle Morari. I thought that was some pretty incredible disc golf, being able to watch uh, some of our best competitors and honestly, one of our youngest cards, I think you'd probably really find in the New England area, truly play some spectacular disc golf and seeing the level at what uh, what some of our young talent really has, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, good point with uh, the young talent. I mean, they're probably averaging 20 years of age out there right now. <laughs> Maybe <kind> less. Of... <laughs> I mean, when you have a 12-year-old on the card, it yeah, he brings the it average down. down. <laughs> well, we got a check-in from Disc Golf 978 with the scores. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, so Paul Kranz now has the lead. He's at nine down. Dylan Capaccioli is now at eight down. Harry Chase is at seven down. And... Wyatt is he's hanging in there he's holding his own he's playing some disc golf he's de- might be feeling a little lead card big tournament vibes yeah it's his first debut on the GMT channel and uh, as you saw Paul there he's kind of hanging on to the lead let's see if he can finish it out here hole 10 is the absolute signature hole here at 501 disc golf course it is a beautiful downhill shot 501 feet is that where they get 501 disc golf from? I don't know. But it is a par three. You can throw putters, you can throw backhands or mid range, you can go fairway driver. You've got this rock right behind the basket, so you can really run aggressive lines to this basket. But there's just a nice cluster of trees you gotta be missing right in the middle. And we got a significant backup before anybody could throw here. So it kind of stalls your shot a little bit, getting ice. But Harry's not afraid to throw his PD here. Let's see what happens. Just a little low out of his hand. He didn't give it the height so it could kind of glide out, get down to the basket. But he's on the edge. He'll be fine. Yeah, I should definitely be able to save par. And that's the thing. For 500 feet, I mean, a lot of people say, why is this not a par four? but I think it's a great hole. One of the best in New England, I think. Yes, this hole has gotten harder and harder. You can see the tree in the center of the gap that has all of the sunlight on it that Paul just kind of snuck through that hit. Those branches have grown out a substantial amount. If they clean that tree up, then it would be a really good par three, but with all those branches narrowing the gap, it's a little harder now. Yeah, and it's a tough forehand uh, line for Dylan here, but he took his Halo Destroyer and got down there. And uh, why it's going to be jammed up here next to the logs. I mean, I love the aesthetic look, but sometimes you do not want to be there as a player. Yeah, and you know, these features, the log piles, the branch piles, the long brush, the tight wooded gap you have to hit, this is all adding into the second hardest hole in the course to park. Truly a gem, though. I mean, this green with the rock, you can do a lot of different things, including a little uh, off the board if you wanted to. Yeah, I'm surprised I didn't see, you know, you didn't see players throw that a little bit harder there, Harry, uh, calling you out just a little bit on that, just plain shot. Like, you can throw it at this rock, like exactly like Dylan just did. Putt it. You're not going to go blow deep if you're at chain height. Oh, what a bid by Paul there. Yeah, Yeah. Paul is hungry. He has (laughs) taken some blood. He smells the blood in the water, and he's just going for it. That was an aggressive play, and I I really admire that. Oh, Oh, that's a heartbreaker. You you hate to see that. That was to save his par. And, I mean, he wasn't even in a bad place. It's just that's how hard it was to get up and down. Yeah, it's a really hard hole, extremely peculiar. Ooh, Harry with a great putt there to clean yeah. up to save his par. A little bit of a fist pump action there. I love that. Yeah. Oh, he he knows that was huge because that's keeping him in touch with Paul and with Dylan. Um, you know, and we can't say this enough about Wyatt. The kid is 12 years old, and he's missing 40-foot putts off the top band and he's not having meltdowns like i don't i know a lot of 12 year old kids because of my job but his composure (laughs) is incredible 
Hole 11, 243 feet downhill over the rock wall. The rock walls are inbounds. There's no OB here. This is truly a must get to, something you feel like you can just throw a simple little hyzer shot to. Yeah, and um, Harry's getting just knocked down a little early with this tactic. I would have liked to have seen a little bit of more of a mid-range play like Paul is doing here with his Iron Samurai 3. You know, it's, it's a short enough hole where you throw what you're comfortable with. Paul's very comfortable kind of slowing down on mm. faster discs, and you can tell he's learned under Simon because Simon is so strong at slowing down on faster discs. And yeah. Let's see a replay here because I think he got a really good skip. Let's take another... Oh, yeah. oh come on. <laughs> you skipped That's... over a rock wall? <laughs> That's a world champion love right there. I that's the kind of skip you need to win tournaments these days. If you're if you're not skipping over rock walls, you have no chance of winning. Uh, shout out to Quentin Scott for that angle. I appreciate that. Yeah. Wyatt throwing a great line here. This is another valid line, just kind of more straight and direct at it. Gets hung up by that last protecting cluster of trees. We've seen him hit some bangers, though, so we'll see if he'd be able to save that birdie. Yeah. Dylan's going Praxis again. Gets it a little high. Didn't want to hit any of the birdhouses that are on this hole, so I think that's what he was signaling at. Have you noticed that, Rivas, the number of birdhouses on this hole? On this hole, and especially in this course, there's like, I want to say there's over 10 that people have counted, and I think they're on Instagram. Take a look. Yes. Yeah, it's one of the signatures here. Just there is a lot of character on the holes, which is great. It's just such a beautiful setting. Like you feel like you're, I don't know. It doesn't feel like Massachusetts. I don't know what it is. Oh. I see he almost made that. <laughs> oh. What a bid. He's just, just off. Like if these putts start sinking, they start going in. He's winning this tournament. Absolutely. And you know what? He has such a bright future for him. He's going to be winning tournaments. I saw that he won his first B tier this year. It's only a matter of time that he wins his first A tier. Yeah, I'm just, I'm very grateful that by the time he hits puberty, I'm probably playing Masters. So. <laughs> Are you still laughing at that joke? <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will definitely be a legend by then, so don't worry. <laughs> uh, and Harry's disappointed with his par, but we're moving on to hold 12. Par for 500 feet. This is a monster. Break it down, Wads. Yeah, this whole, this rock wall you see, the entire length of the fairway on the left side is all out of bounds. So this hole just oozes trouble. So you need to throw a committed shot that goes quite a ways and has to go straight. Because if you go off to the right, you're going to have a very tricky up and down. You have to stay straight. This hole just kind of really begs you to trust a line. Oh, that was such a good break, though. He could have easily gone over the wall there, I feel like. Yep. Aw. Hey, guys. Comfortable on that bench, and that was his instinct. And then here's Harry Ooh. with his FD. You don't want to see that Ooh. on this. Hole. That's too early, guy. That That's too so early. early. You know, I know the line he's going for is throwing committed, throwing at that OB line, letting the disc turn. But he's yeah, that's a long way to carry. Almost basically a re tee for Harry. Why it stayed safe. Yeah, and it was the first time I've seen him not throw his warden. He threw his rive there. <laughs> Why? He has other discs. I know, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a good place for Dylan. He should be able to save up and down before. Mm. So oh. Gary just kept that low. Couldn't see the finish because he decided to block his shot, but it's still shorter than anyone else. Yeah, you don't want to see that, that he's up three times already. With an OB stroke. And he throws it into the ground again. 
that's tough to see considering he was the defending champion. And he feels, you could tell on camera, he's a little deflated there. Yes. You know, I really think that replaying a tournament that you won the previous year adds so much extra pressure and it's so much harder to play well in that tournament again. Mm-hmm. So it, it's really hard to be a back-to-back champion and, you know, we've been there. We know that it's hard and you'll get there and you'll bounce back. Unless it's new England championships like you. <laughs> I did and not win this year. So. Oh, Spoonwood though. You course record back-to-back rounds. That's all I have to say. Well, back-to-back rounds. That's the same day going <laughs> from year to year and stepping into a tournament be like, all right, I won this last year. Let's defend. It's hard. Yeah. And why it's in a good spot. He's going to potentially get a birdie look, I think. There we go. That's yeah. a shot. That's the Harry we know throwing his tactic there. And Paul just laying up for his par. Yeah, the rocks can part. be dangerous. Yep, taking par on this hole is definitely not a bad thing. Hole 12 comes in as the sixth hardest hole. It played above par at 4.26. Yeah, it's just a, a very tough hole with that OB, and that was an amazing putt by Wyatt. Let's take a replay here. Oh, yeah, checking the wind, getting the feet set. Very composed for how young he is. It's yes. kind of insane. Yeah, the level of focus that he has is awesome. And he's playing all the big tournaments. I mean, there's... he really is. And it's impressive that he's playing professional and he's cashing. And he's yeah. not, you know, he's not trying to do the, I want to retain amateur status. Good putt for Dylan there. Yeah, that was a good birdie for Dylan. You need that. Yeah, that sets him uh, right back in contention here. Yeah, because Paul's looking at his par and he just made, you know, he lost a stroke to Dylan right there. Now it's a little bit of match play because now it's within two. Yeah. Yeah, two with a lot of holes left where there's definitely some scoring uh, separation possible. We're coming up to a very hard hole, hole 13. What are your thoughts on this one? Um, I, I'm still trying to formulate thought on this hole. <laughs> it's, a, it's a confusing hole. There's a line that does kind of exist. It's a, a power forehand line, really. It's not a good lefty backhand flex line. It truly only sets up for a Dylan Cappuccioli signature <laughs> power flexed forehand here. Yeah, I know uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but in that skins match, you might see some incredible shots from him. And that's why he, Steve said again there, because that's literally the same line. And that was actually oh. better because he didn't go deep. Yeah, because I believe in the skins match, he was throwing a destroyer, and now he's throwing his predator. And it just, like, throwing a predator 272 feet uphill, it's probably 72 feet uphill. So this this hole plays a mega distance. I can't even get there with a driver. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shout out to On The Rise Disc Golf, taking some awesome socials there, and check out his YouTube. And here's Paul Kranz. He's not going to do what Paul uh, Dylan did. He's just going for the simple highs or trying to get through on the right gap there. Yeah, the you know what this whole kind of baits you into doing is throwing a, a kind of a power shot straight up through the woods to see if you can filter through, and then you're mm-hmm. kind of just playing off of the kick. Ugh. Taking his rive again. Ah, that was a bad kick. You don't want to see that on this hole. Yeah, that is that is definitely a danger zone. If it kicks really bad, there is out of bounds to the left that you can find. But yeah, and this Harris. is the shot. Yeah, that's the shot that you were just describing. Actually, trying to power through there, maybe get a big skip up the hill. Yeah, it looks like that might have been a little low. So I'm not sure what he's gonna have and what kind of branches he'll have in his face. But but why? he took his, his PD there. Yeah, why it's in a tough spot here. But he's a lefty, so he could do things like that. Give himself a long putt. Yeah, I don't know where he landed, but I know he's probably circle two. 
Ooh, now we got earbud Paul. <laughs> didn't I didn't notice he he put his earbud in at certain some hole. Yeah, trading places here. Yeah, and you could tell that he's in a spot where he can get up and down not easily, but he doesn't have a good bid. No, and Wyatt didn't really have much with the that stance there, elevated stance. And here's Harry for his deuce. Harry. Yes, Harry. What a bounce back. That's huge. That's a <laughs> massive. I mean, he just took a double bogey, and now he just took a birdie on one of the hardest holes on the course. This averaged 3.24. Wow. It's impressive. So he is one of the four birdies that we'll find on the hole. That's very impressive. And here's Dylan to see if he can get his deuce. Wow. <laughs> yes, he can. <laughs> two so days in a row. <laughs> yeah, we just watched two of the, or half of the birdies on this hole. Congratulations to Ben Tucker and Kyle Hirsch for getting the other two birdies. I'd love to see what their lines were, but, you know, a bogey and a par cleanup for Paul, not too bad. Not too bad. Hole 14, 333 feet. But man, this hole plays way longer than 333 feet. It has this awkward straight line and then you get out to about 270 feet and it starts bending right in a very peculiar here bend to the right as well. It's not just a slow drift. Your forehand typically goes too straight or you go saw it off and go too early. It's a very fascinating line yeah and dylan almost i think he almost nailed it he might have just hit something right at the end with his halo boss yeah i think he just went a little too straight and it just got a forward skip instead of a flare skip and harry's taking his fd oh that was looking good then just broke ah. a little too right yeah yeah it's like the gap that you need to hit off the tee is in such a weird spot to have a disc fly that far straight and then to turn right, oh man, it is such a hard line to hit. Paul looks like he might have done it. Yeah, and that was a Zen 2. Uh, shout out to Nate Perkins. Wyatt. Come on. Oh yeah, Wyatt. As a lefty, oh, oh baby. my gosh, he pured that. That was his felon. Yeah, and he's giving himself a nice uh, 45, 50 foot putt. So even like the best shot out of the the grouping is still short on a 333 foot hole. I don't think it's 333 feet. I feel like it's 390. <laughs> it's I, it insane. plays so far. And oh my, Paul is in danger here. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh boy. I hate to see that. Yeah. All, he, he only has a one stroke lead. I mean, he can't kind of, he can't be doing that. No, and, you know, Dylan is under the basket, so he's getting his par. So Paul has to hit a putt from quite a ways away. He has no look. He has to lay up. Yep. Wow. Yeah. And it's, if, it's also a death putt. I mean, there's you don't want to run that. No, I mean, look at what, what Wyatt's looking at. He's got nothing, oh. and don't do this. Is that, okay, that okay. could have been worse, though. So. Yeah. All things considered, he got that kind of lucky bounce back to the left instead of forward. And that you could tell that he was very nervous on that putt because that putt was so much slower than the rest of his putts have been. Mm -hmm. uh. Uh-oh. Wyatt. Yeah. Harry's just saying, please, let me just get my par and walk off this hole. There you All go, right. Harry. Yeah, good, a good par on this hole is not a bad thing. It played uh, just above par 3.24, the same, so the same kind of stat as the hole before. Mm -hmm. Two toughies back-to-back. -back. Actually, three because you had 12 as well. I mean, that, that's an insane, yeah. insane stretch there. But to have two holes 
back to back that average the same above par. If you go par par, you gain half a stroke in the field. Yeah, absolutely. And here's 15, a little bit of a relief after hole 14. What do you think yep. of this hole? Hole 15, it is 168 feet. This green position is very awkwardly tucked to the right. It, um, I don't know what the best line is. I throw a high stall forehand and you cannot push it deep. This looks like it's going to be pretty good. Yeah, a little pretty good. Deep, but that's perfect. Like that's right in that 20 foot range. Um, but you do kind of have to gamble a little bit off the drive. Yeah, and he's putting pressure on the rest of the card because uh, they're, everyone's tied, Paul and Dylan at least. Right, yeah, you just got tied with Paul. So now you're in the driver's seat and you throw a great shot and you say, Paul, match me, buddy. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And he does. That was a good shot with his... I want to say that's his PD. Yep. And now Wyatt's stepping up. Wyatt's throwing his Saki Slammer. What a good shot by the lefty. Oh. And it's pretty much parked. Yep, that's a nice rock there, man. You should go back and kind of go thank that rock for skipping him forward and not just stopping him. Well, he needed that. He, he took a couple bogeys on the back nine. And what a great oh. shot by Paul. So smooth, great pace. That's kind of like Simon out there. Yep, his putt, I mean, Paul's game is so impressive, but his putting is probably the most impressive because he makes it look effortless. He's calm, he's cool, it's not jerky. It's just a smooth release with a nice crisp snap. Mm -mm. I could watch that putt all day. Oh, yeah. That putt, and any putt that Paul has, you could watch that one all day. Yep, and Harry's looking for his birdie after taking a, a double, a birdie, a par, and now another birdie. So he's <laughs> getting back into the driver's seat. I love it. He's making his comeback. He's ready to go. He's not satisfied. He knows he can still make a decent amount of money on this tournament. Oof. Yeah. Suck it in. It counts. Good catch. Good catch. Good two. Yeah, you got to smile it off. Yep. And can we get a star frame? Yeah. First star frame of the Sunstein Open, ladies and gentlemen. GMT frame. Let's go. Oh, that's a good one. I got to I gotta patent that. Where can I patent that? Oh, Sunstein. Long. Ooh, look at that. Speaking of which, just want to give a huge shout out hey. to them for adding all that cash, $1,500 added cash to this tournament. We wouldn't be here without them. Huge thank you to our friends at Sunstein. Yeah. Hole 16, 403 feet, part three, and all downhill. So those past couple holes where we've been kind of climbing up, we're now on our descend to the finish line here. This blue basket is tucked in a slightly to the right position off the tee. Again, another hole where you can throw mid-range, you can go backhands, you can go forehands, you can throw putters, you can go fairways. This is Dylan's Raptor. Mm -mm. Oh, I would have loved to see that oh, get through. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That looks like that carried quite a way left. Yeah, the kicks on this hole are gnarly, but this might be the second best hole on the course. I love this downhill shot. Yes. Right. It's This is a hole that it's hard to throw the correct line, but when you do, man, it is so rewarding. And guess who's going to show you the correct line right here? Ah, oh, Polly Kranz. Oh. With a nice little love tap. That could have actually gone closer. <laughs> it could have been closer, but it also could have been further if it didn't hit that mm -hmm. tree. So, you know, if he had that disc, if that thing gets, you know, another month of seasoning, if that's thrown right now, oh, that's a heart. Yeah, it's probably for Tilly, the girlfriend. That was a great looking shot there. And he's going to be taking his trust, Wyatt. Um, I just, that Iron Samurai shot by Paul was so clutch. I mean, I cannot yep. stop thinking about how, you know, meaningful that yeah. is right at this hole. Yep. And that's, you know, that's what Paul does. He, when he gets into those pressure situations, he continues to deliver. He does not crack. That dude is a diamond. 
Not mm. a Maple Hill diamond. <laughs> no, we're not talking Team Challenge drama here. Sorry, Gage Benson. Mm-hmm. He is still a two buff. Don't worry, Yetter. Um, but he's a, he's a true there. diamond. Harry getting up and down, most likely for his three. And a little deep there, but salvageable. Yep, that's fine. That'll be good. You know, even though Wyatt's had a little bit of the shakies, but he should connect. Oh my god. Oh, gosh. wow. This, this guy's automatic. How many twos were there on this? Not that many. I bet you we have the technology to figure that one out. Let's see. Hole <laughs> well, 16. Oof, the fourth hardest hole. There were seven twos, actually. So that was wow. a decent That's amount. That's impressive. Yeah. Yes. But this so putt, you'll see, just yeah. hangs on. Just hangs mm-hmm. on to that left side. Love it. Great shot from Dylan to stay only one stroke behind. Yeah, I mean, that was a good upshot by him uh, on his third shot there, having to suffer a bogey, but staying within it. Mm hmm. Great pick up by Wyatt. Yeah. And let's let's talk about who's on everyone's tail. So Dylan is at 10, uh, Kranz is at 11. You are not too far behind, and Elijah Brandt as well. So, I mean, you had, I think you were shooting around six down at this point. Yeah. You know, sometimes you put yourself in situations where you go, all right, the lead, it, it's pretty far away, but if you have a great round, you can, you never know what can happen, and, you know, you just go for it. Hole 17, 253 feet, par 3, downhill, yet another signature hole here. Mm. We're going to play to the green basket, the water you see to the right side in that stone wall. Those are casual. There's no out of bounds here. So, man, it is right there for you to throw it just down and coast and sit and maybe even skip into the basket. Oh, what a beautiful <laughs> shot. That was his tactic there. And I think Paul is smelling blood right now. He just wants the victory. Yep. Yeah, Paul is truly someone that loves it. Harry throwing that P2 that we've seen do some magical mm. things checks off of that rock wall hey look chasing the bees hi chasing the bees gall- what a beautiful gallery watching harry's amazing putter shot oh yeah that's picture perfect probably the the easiest putt and the putt you definitely want on a hole like this yeah don't hit your head oh, oh. hit again that's, that's tough to see. That was uh, his warden, uh, pink warden, not his blue one. Yeah. Yeah, he might be having some grip if issues going on right now. His, his timing is not quite there. Oh, oh wow. Great upshot, though. Wow. His scramble game is really good. Yeah. That was an incredible shot. Get Dylan it. has to go for that, yep. Yeah, Dylan knows the situation. Dylan checks scores. He's he's watching what he needs to do. He knows where everybody's at. So he knew he had to put a bid on that one. No headphones, though, I've noticed. So Did he take it out? I think so, and I think Paul took his out. So, I mean, it's getting intense, folks. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, sometimes you ride the wave, or you get too intense with them on, and then you, you have to take it out to calm yourself down and... You know, put yourself into that spot where you're you're in that sweet zone and you're not overhyped and over anxiety and you're just feeling it. Absolutely. And uh, Paul's up by two with that swing there. And he wants that Sunstein uh, Massachusetts Grand Prix, Grand Prix qualifier spot. I mean, this is all this is all for it right now. Hole 18, break it down. Hole 18, probably the, either the second or third signature hole here at 501 Disc Golf Course in Warren. It is a par four, one of the few field shots. You have to throw through a gap off the tee that is a, a very wide, 80 feet wide gap. And you're trying to land right around the green pin to make an approach to the blue basket with that OB rock ball behind. Paul's leaning on what here? That's his DD3. He's swinging it, and just as long as he gets below that tree line, he is good. Yeah. That's going to be easy approach for him. Yeah, that's you can go forehand, backhand, whatever's comfortable from that position. 
you know, that's, that should seal the deal unless he somehow goes OB and then misses the putt. Yeah, but that OB can come into play very fast here. I mean, we've seen a lot of trouble, even for the top pros on that out-of-bound line. Where did that go? Harry. Wow. <laughs> that was really high. I mean, do you know if Harry – is Harry's play to go over those trees, or is that just kind of a – I think it just li- – yeah, I think that lifted up. I think there was an extreme headwind there at the end. Yeah. And why it's going to be taken is Grace. He's getting in a good spot. It got really windy on this last hole for them. Yeah, really windy, and you can hear the – you know, the people putting out on hole two as well. See, there's a little distraction. Wow. Dylan is wow. not oh holding gosh. back. Did he just? <laughs> is that found? What What happened there? Uh, I don't know. Let's oh see a replay. Uh, Whoa. <laughs> there's only two people in the world that can do this, and he's All right. Only... All right. Okay. Look at that. All right. That's... That was best case scenario for that shot, I think. He almost aced <laughs> Ace screens. It's a little short of that. It was on a. It was on a lot of angles. Ooh, oh, Harry Barry left. Yeah, left that little too short for comfort. I'll tell you that much. You know, and that's where being in an unfamiliar landing zone and that deep OB definitely plays with you. Yeah, and that's a good point. It's not like everybody plays this course. It's not in the backyard. It's pretty kind of uh, out of the way for a lot of these players, except for Paul. He plays here a lot. Yes. Yeah, so there's Dylan's zone on the upshot. I think he's understanding his from where he was the best chance was at just a nice three. Swing it wide. Ooh. Wow, Paul. Ooh. He got really lucky there. Yeah, he's going to, you know, you could have easily skipped just over that rope because that rope's not on the top of the wall. It's at the bottom. I mean, the wind took it way more than he expected. You you can definitely tell that. Well, you see the players, you know, really feeling the wind. You can see Steve Abreu in the back room. His shirt's moving the wind. You can see Steve Economos. His shirt's... Whoa. See, that's the danger of... Yeah, how? It happens so quickly. Right on a putt that just, you know, dribbled. Like, you can see his disc and you can see the line. Like, oof. Such a meaningful putt. <gasps> what? Is that for oh. the win? <sighs> Sorry. I, I, I have no words. <laughs> we have to see a replay. A slow-mo replay because... Come on. I don't even think he knew that was going in. The GMT top band putt. We've seen yes. some weird putts, but look at this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh his face says it all, folks. It really, there are no words. 2023 just, Sunstein Open champion oh. and going to the Massachusetts Grand Prix in October. You are... You are winning the tournament when you are hitting putts like that. Uh, wow. Yeah, even Dylan said that's not fair. <laughs> yeah, that's. I I think the wind made sure that went in, and uh, good job wind and good job Paul. Uh, he would have won if he missed that putt anyway. Yeah, it was a dominant performance. I mean, he won by three strokes. Dylan's coming in second, and let's see what Wyatt does here for his birdie. Yep. Nice birdie. Yep. Good job, Wyatt. Like, way to finish strong. And there, there it is, averaging 10.36 for the event, Paul. Dylan coming in wow. second. Elijah coming in third. And you right on their tail in fourth place. Harry coming in fourth place as well. What a final result there. Yeah, that is a, that's a battle for sure. That's a, this is a great tournament. This is a must-play event. This, you know, Sunstein Open is... One of the best. We're here with the winner, the champion of the 2023 Sunstein Open, and that's Paul Kranz. Way to take it down. Thank you. And uh, the last time we interviewed you, you were the AM winner of the Grand Prix. This is the first pro win for you on the Sunstein uh, Tour. Yep. So congratulations. Thank you. And uh, you were three back heading into the final round, I think. Yep. And you had to chase Dylan down. What was your strategy? 
Uh, in my mind, it's kind of a. Uh, it depends on how Dylan's playing. He's he's way too good, and it's like the three strokes felt like it was impossible. Yeah. Like especially the layout, I, I wasn't sure how it was gonna play with the greens and the blues, but I didn't quite know how much split separation there was. I think the three strokes kind of felt like it was gonna be be too much. Yeah. But I was able to get it back, uh, tie it up through two holes, and then it was just battle from there. Yeah, he had a rough start. I think he hit a tree off the drive of one, yep. and then you parked it and birdied one, I think, yep. and birdied two. Yep. And uh, you were rolling, and I think you and Dylan have this like such contrasting styles, which anybody who'll see the video saw, where you are like down the middle, most holes, not scrambling, super consistent, always there. And he throws spectacular shots, but doesn't always score like sometimes he'll get off track yeah. the funny thing is that he chased you back down on yeah. 15 I think 14 or 15 um, 14 I think you had a little trouble 14 blue yeah. you were off in the woods yeah. and um, I think it was tied by then and then everybody took a two on 15 and then it came down really to 16 he was off left and you threw a great drive what was your plan on 16 down the hill um, I was actually stepping up to the tee and I was praying for a headwind I wanted the wind to pick up because I don't quite have a disc that fits that shot selection. Um, it's either too flippy or too stable, and I needed the headwind to like even it out and, and help it to turn. Um, I threw the line that I wanted, the angle that I wanted, uh, then I think it hit a tree down the, down the stretch, and 35 footer, 30 footer for the, for the two. Barely snuck it in left side, but yeah, I, I, the, the main thing was to have a headwind. Yeah. That, that kind of helped me out. And then 17, it was a great shot. And then uh, 18, your tee, tee shot was so good, Dylan said he had to score zero, which yep. was about over by then. Yeah. And then uh, coming down on the left putt, sort of like a crazy little off the band and in, yeah. but we'll take it. By then you had a four stroke lead and yep. it was it was not in doubt anymore. Yeah. But what a fun weekend. So Friday we started with skins. You got to play with Simon and Dylan yep. and Nick Patch. And how did that go? That went good. It, it was a great confidence booster. I mean. I, I didn't win the skins match, but I shot 11 down on greens. Yeah. And that, that, that felt good to hit lines, hit putts. Yeah. Just like a good confidence boost going into into this tournament. So felt comfortable going, uh, playing at five, I mean, five of one. It, I love this course. It yeah. fits, fits my straight shot selection and just, I enjoy it a lot. It's, it's mainly comes down to the putting green here for me. Yeah. So last year, Harry Chase took it down and you were congratulating him. This year you're on the card and he was congratulating you. And I think that you guys uh, are friends, right? Yep. And, and so it's fun to see even Harry in the mix with Dylan. The three of you are really like of a generation. It's great to watch you yep. play. So this is your first time qualifying for the Grand Prix as a pro. Yep. And uh, there's that big prize money at the end. I, I'm hoping we're going to see you at Maple Hill in October. I plan on it. All right, great. I'm excited. Okay. All right, everybody. This is Paul Kranz, your 2023 champion. Thank you. What a great little interview there. And once again, huge shout out to 501, huge shout out to Sunstein. Thanks for being here, Kyle. It wouldn't have been possible without you. I think we brought some great coverage here at 501. I hope you enjoyed this. Any last words? Oh, just, I love being a part of this thing. I love being a part of this community. Disc golf truly is one of the best things. And you have people like Papa Chuck and Scott and Melissa from 978 and Steve. Abreu from uh, Sunstein and, you know, obviously you, Rivas, and Greatest Media Team. So, you know, Disc Golf's one of the best things. And thank everybody out there for supporting everybody and helping each other out. Awesome. Well said. And just a reminder for everybody that's interested in seeing what the current Sunstein standings looks like, you can go to Stat Mando, click on the rankings. There's a special section just for Sunstein. Um, and the series right now, we have Dylan Capaccioli in first place. Paul Kranz already locked a, a bid, so we don't have to worry about him. And we got Harry, we got you. So you're in the top three contenders. Okay. And, and uh, we got Elijah who finished second place, uh, or excuse me, third place in this tournament. Keith Sykes, uh, Nicholas Economos, Matt Armstrong, Gillis, McDougal and Jared Hill. That's the top 10. That's what it looks like. If you want to see where your standing is, check out statmando.com rankings, Sunstein, MPO.